Houston, church services canceled. Iconic marathon delayed. The planet is going to Purell in a handbasket. More sporting events canceled. Coronavirus cases are now stopped. Here the going to get worse. Like we're going to do okay with this. It's going to get enough people infected and enough people sick that we're going to really overburden our hospitals, and that's what we're worried about. Hi, my name is Trisha, and I'm from the Great Plains Action Society team. And I'm here to share my personal COVID-19 story. So never in a million years would I believe I'd be in this position. However, I feel that it's very important because I feel that it can help you. I tested positive for coronavirus just yesterday. My journey begins two weeks ago. I had utilized the Walmart pickup to pick up items and uh, I got some food. I brought it home, I ate it, put my items away. And then within the course of the next couple of days, I started to experience what I thought was a head cold. I had a fever, I had chills, I was fatigued. Um, congestion. So naturally I just used NyQuil and DayQuil to combat it, which for the most part it, it knocked it out. However, I started to experience excruciating back pain which shot into my legs. At that point my baby girl started um, getting a high fever as well. So I was trying to help her as far as help myself. It made for a couple of interesting nights, to so, so to speak. The next symptom that I had experienced was the mental anguish, the confusion. Um, I had tried to get up every day um, to do daily tasks such as doing dishes, laundry, um, make sure my kids are fed, um, just little things that, you know, you just go about your daily life. I found it really hard to get out of bed. I had to kind of build up the energy to do these things. Midday, it was just, you know, kind of, am I depressed because of social distancing or is this really something that's happening to me? The next symptom that I experienced was taste aversions. I never in my wildest, you know, dreams would ever think that, you know, that a virus could do such a thing. So I basically could not taste food. Um, it just, I, I knew that my body needed the sustenance, but I it just, it wasn't, it wasn't appealing to me. I ended up losing five pounds within the first week of having coronavirus, which at that point I didn't know it was that. I drank a pop <laughs> most days, so um, drinking a pop just did not, it just didn't taste the same. So I experienced that. Then it was the shortness of breath. And that was the scariest because of the fact that I, you know, it just, it was apparent within the eighth day that, you know, I started to feel like I couldn't just catch my breath. Within the next couple of days, it got worse and worse and worse. And it felt like somebody was sitting on my chest and then I had just ran a marathon in the cold weather and I just couldn't get that deep breath. It was very scary. Just, I didn't want my kids to wake up and see me struggling to breathe. So I knew I had to go and get tested. I went on to the Test Iowa drive. Um, it's a drive-through for coronavirus testing. Um, I filled out the, the um, questionnaire. I got my little appointment made and um, come the next week I, you know, I, went to my appointment and oh my goodness the test itself is very excruciating um, they take this really long q-tip and they basically shove it all the way back into your nasal cavity and they have to hit this air pocket and they have to make sure that they get everything that they can get in there and it's just really uncomfortable it's not to say that you know it's um you can do it, it's just, it's very painful, to say the least. It made me cry. Um, I've never felt so offended. Um, 
I felt so bad for the lady because I gave her the ugliest look I could ever give her and I know that she was just there doing her job which you know I get it um, but I just the pain was just oh I just couldn't but that to say the least I, I got through it so I waited for the results I actually ended up going into the ER later that day because of the fact that my breathing I just I couldn't take it um, anymore and I needed I needed help so I went into the ER and shout out to Sioux City Unity Point they were very professional and very quick I did chest x-rays they kind of you know went through my symptoms I was prescribed an inhaler which is right here I utilize this thing daily um, until I obviously I, I still have it on hand just in case but um, this helped me out tremendously and then I was also prescribed some heavy-duty cough medicine so um, I think that's what really helps me kick uh, kick it in the last leg so I um, obviously I had mentioned my daughter being sick um, she's no longer sick and she seems to be fine um, the most that she experienced was a high fever and then a couple of days of a stuffy nose. Other kids are fine. I have two other little ones, um, but they seem to be fine. It was very hard to self-isolate just because I am a single mom. I get it. Um, you Sometimes you just, you gotta roll with the punches and you know, I think I did the best that I could to self-isolate from them for a couple of days, or well, not a couple of days, let's be honest, it was a couple of weeks. So with that being said, I just wanted to obviously share my story to help you make better decisions. I know that states are reopening up and I don't agree with that because of the increasing numbers of the coronavirus. However, it is what it is, um, but I'm hoping that my story can reach to you so that way you can prevent yourself from going through something like this. I do extend my heart to anybody that has a loved one that has passed or that is currently battling this, um, especially individuals with pre-existing conditions um, and our elderly, um, our children too as well, our vulnerable populations. Uh, this is no joke, this is, this is real. And um, I just, I couldn't even imagine you know, um, having a loved one and not knowing whether or not you're going to see them again. And I don't mean to, like I said, I don't mean to scare anyone, but it is about awareness. It's about making those better choices. As a single mom, I get it. Um, you have to go and you have to provide for your family somehow. So um, I want to extend the message of hand washing, sanitizing, and using those masks. Um, when you get home, take your clothes off, um, put them in the laundry room, put it in the washer. These are things that I missed that day and I paid a, I paid the price. So um, with that, please stay safe, practice social distancing, and we will get through this.